Well, boys, here's a hit we'll beat the other fellows on. That cabinet will hold together long enough to get to the dealer. Cut out that static while we hand our friends a few how do you doodle do's. This is Farrier speaking, sales manager and chief dealer's helper at the factory. Merry Christmas and a happy new year to you and yours. The heads of department here at the factory, every one of us, are delighted to be able to say a personal word in this unique way to you fellows in the front line trenches. We want you to know that we realize what you're up against, that we're going to maintain close contact with you, and that we'll be here backing you up 100% until the last gun is fired. 1925 is going to be a far better year than this year has been. The worst is over, so let's all put on our galoshes and wade in. Let's make some money this year. This is Art Wall, advertising and music manager, broadcasting on a wave of increased business. I'm the poor boo who writes those Saturday evening post ads you've admired so. Aside from all joking, we're cooking up some plans for next year that may not increase the size of the Saturday evening post, but will certainly increase the size of your Saturday night bankroll. Among other things, there will be a lot of good old tone tests. And, by the way, a man who heard a tone test the other day remarked, Say, if you could get a pair of to fit that phonograph and teach it to carry a steer, you could get it a job at the Metropolitan Opera House. I have another confession to make. I picked the hit, so I'm going to beat it before you hit me. This is Walter Miller speaking, manager of the recording studio, Fifth Avenue, New York City. I call all the artists by their first name, but I'll hate to tell you what they call me. When they sing sour, they expect me to record sweet. If the record is good, they grab off the glory. If the record is rotten, they blame me. But even so, you'll admit, the records are getting better. And they'll be still better next year. This is Buchanan speaking, manager of record manufacturing. I make white label records. I never had anything to do with black flavor records. Our records are getting better, aren't they, fellas? Well, I'll have to beat it now, or you won't get this record on time. This is O'Shaughnessy talking. Record service. That's me. I take care of your record orders. I live on complaints of delays. They are food and drink to me. I eat them alive. Next year, I expect to starve to death because you fellows won't have any cause for complaints about your record orders. Uh, this is Bill Hildebrand speaking, traffic manager. I've got the railroads working for me, and I'm working for you even though I'm not on your payroll. I'll get shipments to you promptly if I have to jackass them myself. That's all I've got to say. Now clock this record over and get another earful. This is Sumner Williams, the purchasing agent. I am having a bowling alley and four mahjong tables installed in the purchasing department to keep the buyers occupied. Life would be very pleasant for us if somebody in western Texas or northern Michigan didn't sell a phonograph every month or so. When that happens, we have to send down to the hardware store for another wheelbarrow load of supplies. As fast as some dealers get a phonograph, they sell it. But others, thank God, are more considerate. When they sell anything, they take a nice long rest for fear of overstocking the community. What we really need are conscientious men with scruples against selling anything at all. It's time now for my afternoon nap. Don't wake me up. This is Charlie North speaking, manager of photograph manufacturing. These other fellows who have been shouting about records but they'd all be sleeping in the park if I didn't build good photographs to play the record. My gang wants work. The backyard's full of mahogany. Shoot us some water. This is Gene Phillips speaking. 
You know what they say about the credit man. All right, that's me. I'm sure of my money on time, and my advice to you is to do the same. A good dealer keeps one eye on his inventory and the other on his collection. This is John Sherman speaking. I look after your phonograph service and complaints. We expect to get even better service next year. I was told to say that. Now I'll tell you the truth. I'm the guy that gets the devil from you for all the mistakes these other fellows make. But it's not your fault, and I'll do my darnest to see that you are taken care of. This is Walter Hubner speaking, accounting department manager. I'm the popular guy who sends out the bill. Everybody is glad to hear from me. Next year, I'll try to get bills out more promptly. Be sure to kick if you don't get them on time. This is Riley speaking, manager of the commission man plan. The best little plan ever conceived for selling Edison phonographs. If you are a canvassing dealer, you are eligible for the plan, and one of my men will soon call on you if he has not already done so. If you are not a canvassing dealer, you had better get busy, get a canvasser, and get on this eligible list. This is Carl Edison speaking, chairman of the board of directors. It has been almost 50 years since Mr. Edison handed John Cruzy a rough sketch and said to him, Cruzy, make this. It was the phonograph. That night saw also the beginning of a ceaseless striving for greater perfection in product and organization of toil and effort unbroken through the intervening years. Who knows what greater rewards lie just around the corner of our science. The midnight oil still burns in the Edison laboratory. The product that has survived the commercial storms of nearly half a century can face the future with unflinching confidence. And so, a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you all. And here is my promise of the best that is in me to help you make it just that. This is uh, Thomas A. Edison speaking. I'll see that they do what, what they say. I would sing for you, but my wife says my voice sounds like a cracked horn. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. <laughs>